Welcome back, everyone, to our classroom called the College of Glycation. I am Paul Reynolds, a biomedical scientist and professor of cell biology. And today we're diving into a topic that is just as fascinating as it is, in fact, critical. And that topic is glycation and aging, specifically the role of advanced glycation end products or ages in skin and tissue decline. If you caught our previous episodes on glycation, you got the basics of this very sneaky chemical process that's happening in our bodies right now. Today, we're building on that foundation and zooming in, if you will, on how ages wreak havoc on your skin, your collagen, your elasticity, and even tissues far beyond the surface. We'll also unpack insulin resistance, why it's a problem, and how it fuels this glycation mess. Buckle up, because this is going to be a deep dive grounded in peer-reviewed science with a bit of history and even some practical takeaways. So let's start with a quick refresher on glycation, because context in this case is everything. Glycation, as you may have heard, is a non-enzymatic chemical reaction, and that basically means that there's no enzyme required that causes sugar to react with molecules. In fact, any molecule can be glycated. These molecules are glycated by sugars like glucose or fructose, and when they bind proteins, lipids, or nucleic acids, they change the biology of those molecules forever. No enzymes, no control, no energy requirement, just a sticky kind of haphazard process is this role of glycation. Think of it like sugar gluing itself to your body's building blocks. The result? Well, as I've mentioned, the buildup of advanced glycation end products or ages. These are stable, damaging compounds that accumulate over time. So the outcome here is cumulative. Now, this isn't a new discovery. We've talked about this in the past. One of the first researchers on the scene was a fellow by the name of Louis Camille Malliard. He first described the reaction in 1912, over a century ago. And he noted how sugars and proteins form kind of a brownish compound when they are heated. By 1981, scientists like Monnier and Cerami connected glycation to aging. And what they did was they showed that it accelerates damage of skin collagen. So now if you fast forward to today, we now know much more about ages and how they are implicated in everything from diabetes complications, which we'll talk about in abundance later, in a future episode, and even Alzheimer's, which we covered last week. But today our focus again is on skin and systemic problems. So why does glycation matter for aging is a question some have had. Well, ages are troublemakers. They form irreversible crosslinks with proteins like collagen and elastin, which are the main scaffolding proteins for your skin and in fact, many other tissues. These crosslinks stiffen tissues, they reduce their elasticity, and they impair repair mechanisms. Imagine your skin as a trampoline. Collagen and elastin are the springs that keep it bouncy and amusing. Ages, however, are like rust, and they lock down those springs in place. The result in this case is wrinkles, sagging, thinning skin, and even fragility. But it's not just skin deep. Ages, in fact, do more than just make your skin look older than it is. Ages can trigger inflammation, oxidative stress, and disrupt cellular function across the body. So let's break this down step by step. And in this case, we'll start with the skin. Your skin is your body's largest organ, and it's a frontline victim to this process of glycation. Ages accumulate primarily in the epidermis and the dermis, the two main layers of your skin, especially on long-lived proteins like collagen, which, by the way, has a very, very slow turnover. They last a long time. Think maybe 15 years for half of your skin collagen to renew, so they're around for a long time. 
In 2024, just last year, there was a study in the journal called Experimental Dermatology. And what they said was that ages cross-link to collagen and elastin and in the process reduce your skin's mechanical support, leading to cellular senescence or cells that kind of pause in their turnover. This means your skin loses its ability to snap back in the process, forming wrinkles and yellowing due to the browning that comes with age formation. Have you ever noticed how older skin looks dull or sallow? That's partly due to the ages and the work that they're doing. Now, UV exposure makes it even worse. A few years ago, in 2015, there was a review published in the journal Skin Therapy, and they found that UV radiation accelerates age formation and it does so by generating reactive oxygen species, creating a vicious cycle with oxidative stress. There's a common age called carboxymethyl lysine, or CML, and this common age is especially high in sun-exposed skin, particularly in actinic elastosis. That's a condition where elastin clumps into stiff, irregular structures. This is why photo-aged skin, think about sun-damaged skin, that kind of thing, looks very leathery because of the buildup of these UV-induced ages. The study went further and noted that CML, or carboxymethylysine-modified elastin, resists degradation. So the damaged tissue just sits there. It piles up, accumulates, making you look worse and worse or older by the moment. But it's not just about looks, for sure. Ages not only mess with your skin's function, they also bind to a receptor that has been found in the skin called RAGE. That's the receptor for ages, R-A-G-E. That's a cell surface protein that when it's activated by ages, triggers a robust inflammatory reaction and a buildup of oxidative stress. That was shown in 2016. A study published in Scientific Reports showed that ages increase melanin production via the receptor for ages or rage, and that leads to hyperpigmentation, those age spots that you see on older skin. Ages also impair autophagy. That's the cell's cleanup crew and they basically will let damaged components pile up without being cleared away. And this, of course, disrupts normal repair mechanisms, regeneration, and also homeostasis. And that makes your skin more fragile, thinner, and prone to injury. And all of these things make sense when you consider as aged skin behaves. So let's zoom in on collagen and elastin particularly the dynamic duo of skin structure. Collagen provides strength, resiliency, while elastin gives stretchiness or distensibility. Glycation hits both of these molecules really hard, collagen and elastin. In 2010, there was a study published in the journal Clinical Dermatology. The main investigator was Dandy, and what they found is that glucose and fructose covalently cross-link or bind to collagen fibers, making them stiff and resistant to degradation. In particular, they found that collagen resisted matrix metalloproteases. Let's talk about those for a moment. Matrix metalloproteases, or MMPs, are specialized enzymes that break down old collagen and prepare the skin for replacement. So if these collagen molecules, which have been glycated, resist MMPs, that old collagen is sticking around much longer than it should. And that's bad news. Glycated collagen cannot be remodeled. So you're stuck with this damaged, inflexible group of fibers. Now, skin elasticity in the process tanks in this case. Imagine if you pinch a bit of skin on an older person you can see that it doesn't bounce back or fall down into place like you would see if you were to pinch the skin on a toddler's arm. So elastin takes a similar beating. 
In 2022, a study published in Frontiers of Medicine found that age cross-linked elastin becomes thinner, less rigid, and loses its biological properties. In photo-aged skin, remember, that's carboxymethylysine-modified skin, CML-modified elastin forms very large dysfunctional clumps, especially in solar elastosis. That's where sun-induced damage is very common. Now, this isn't just cosmetic. Again, stiff, glycated tissues impair wound healing, which is a big issue in folks that have diabetes, where ages are sky high. Last year, in 2024, a study published in BMC Endocrine Disorders showed skin ages correlate closely with poor glycemic control and liver fibrosis in diabetic patients. That's where, again, diabetics do not control their blood sugar very well and their liver loses its function. And this highlights how skin damage can be reflective of deeper systemic issues. So what are some of those systemic effects? What is beyond the skin that would be warranted in this discussion? Well, glycation does not stop at the skin. It's actually, in fact, more of a systemic problem. While the skin may be a gateway, lots of tissues are impacted. Ages accumulate in blood vessels, as we talked about a few lessons ago, in the kidneys, which we'll talk about in a follow-up episode soon, but also in nerves, driving complications in diabetics and aging. Now, this was shown in 2017, a review in the Journal of Traditional and Complementary Medicine noted that ages cross-linked to vascular collagen, the same collagen that we've been talking about in your skin. And when ages link onto vascular collagen, it increases vessel stiffness, contributing to hypertension and atherosclerosis. So you'll note here that ages are kind of like misbehaving children on a playground. The glucose that floats around misbehaves and puts their hands on everything, whether it be collagen in the skin, collagen in blood vessels, or collagen in any other organ of the body. This, by the way, is why diabetic patients often have cardiovascular issues, because glycated tissues lose flexibility, and rage that binds these glycation products provides the fuel for inflammation. Further, in nerves, ages impair the function of nerves contributing to diabetic neuropathy, in kidneys, they promote fibrosis, leading to renal failure. All of this was highlighted in a dermatology study that showed wide-ranging systemic outcomes. In 2024, in the journal Experimental Dermatology, there was a study that highlighted how ages disrupt cellular processes, including autophagy, which we've covered, and activate pro-fibrotic pathways causing tissue scarring across many organs, not just the skin. So these systemic damage issues ties back to the skin. Dull, wrinkled, aged skin often signals deeper tissue decline throughout the body. It's like a warning light on your body's dashboard. You see your skin every day, but you may not be looking directly at your liver or heart as often as we should. So let's talk about insulin resistance because it is a major driver of glycation. You'll recall that insulin resistance is when your cells stop responding to insulin. That is the elegant pathway, the hormone that your body releases that tells cells to take up glucose from the blood, thereby removing it from the equation that is proglycation. As a result, blood sugar stays elevated or high, and glucose starts sticking to everything. That's glycation. Now, I've spent years researching this, and evidence is clear. Insulin resistance is a metabolic disaster, but it is a disaster because it accelerates age formation that reaches into every organ of the body. Now, why is this a problem? Well, again, high blood sugar means more glucose is available to bind proteins, lipids, and even DNA, forming these ages very, very fast. 
In 2019, there was a post on X by myself highlighting a study that showed ages directly impair fat cells' ability to take up glucose, worsening insulin resistance along the way. This vicious cycle was confirmed. In the skin, this translates to more collagen cross-linking, more elastin damage, and more rage-driven inflammation. Your skin looks older than it is. Last year, in 2024, in the journal BMC Endocrine Disorders, there was a study published that found skin ages, the researchers measured that non-invasively by looking at autofluorescence, which correlates to HbA1c, a marker of long-term blood sugar, and they found metabolic derangements in diabetes. Uncontrolled blood sugar also fuels oxidative stress. And we've talked about this in a previous episode. Oxidative stress is a breeding ground that amplifies age formation. That was shown in many cases, but more recently in 2015, in a journal known as Skin Therapy Letters, they reviewed a bunch of data that noted ages act as electron donors. And in the process, they generate free radicals small misbehaving molecules that touch almost everything in the body. Everything that free radicals touch, they damage. If they touch the plasma membrane around a cell, they start to poke little holes in it, degrading the stability of cells. But when these free radicals are generated, it will damage tissues throughout the body. In an insulin resistant state, where again, you do not reply or respond to insulin. Well, think of type two diabetics or folks with metabolic syndrome. This um, creates really a perfect storm, high glucose, high ages, and high inflammation, all hammering your skin first and systemic issues as well.